Napoleon Hill is considered one of the most powerful influences in self-improvement, and his famous book, Think and Grow Rich, published in 1937, is one of the best-selling self-help books of all time. Considering the book was published in the Great Depression, Hill clearly understood what it took to become successful and reach our goals no matter who we are and where we came from. Hill had the desire to help people become their best selves and live the lives they always dreamed about. In this video, we're going to cover the highlights of the book so you can start thinking and growing rich. I want to describe my discovery in the simplest terms possible because it will reveal to you why it is true that whatever the mind can conceive and believe, the mind can achieve, regardless of how many times you may have failed in the past or how lofty your aims and hopes may be. It is true that whatever your mind feeds upon, your mind attracts to you. Now you see why it is important that you recognize that all success begins with definiteness of purpose, with a clear picture in your mind of precisely what you want from life. I will describe for you in these simple instructions. One, procure a neat pocket-sized notebook, or something on the order of this one here, loose leaf affair. And on uh, page one, write down a clear description of your major desire in life. The one circumstance or position or thing which you will be willing to accept as your idea of success. And remember before you begin writing that your only limitations are those which you set up in your own mind or permit others to set up for you. And two, on page two of your notebook, Write down a clear statement of precisely what you intend to give in return for that which you desire from life. And then start in right where you stand now to begin giving. And three, memorize both of your statements, what you desire and what you intend to give in return for it. And repeat them at least a dozen times daily. And always end your statements with this expression of gratitude for the blessings with which you were gifted at birth. I ask not for divine providence or more riches, but more wisdom with which to accept and use wisely the riches I received at birth in the form of the power to control and direct my mind to whatever ends I desire. Hill very much believed in the power of positive thinking and creating a detailed plan of what you want out of life because it helps you focus on making that a reality. Tony Robbins, one of the most achieved motivation speakers in the world, wrote his goals on a Russian map. Bruce Lee wrote himself a letter about how he would be a highly sought after stuntman and actor. Jim Carrey wrote himself a $20 million check and eventually received that in his career. By writing down your goals, you are helping bring that reality to life. We come now to the second of the 17 principles which lead to the master key with which you may open the door to the attainment of your definite major purpose in life. Uh, this principle of success is called the master mind principle. I want you to understand the nature of the master mind principle because you must use it before you can take possession of the master key. An understandable definition of the master mind is this. It consists of two or more people who work in perfect harmony for the attainment of a definite purpose. We have all heard the importance of making sure you associate with like-minded people. With Hill's second principle for success, he talks about how this can help create a mastermind, a group of people with a common goal they are working towards. For example, Martin Luther King Jr., a civil rights activist and leader, had a dream and was able to create a mastermind group that fought for the common goal of better civil rights for African Americans living in America. Like-minded people joined his cause, and because of this, he was successful. By surrounding yourself with people who believe in your goals, you help create a better chance for it to happen in real life. Success principle, which has marked the turning point of every person who has promoted himself or herself from the lower brackets of success to the higher planes of achievement where one acquires everything he desires. This principle is called the habit of going the extra mile, which means the habit of rendering more service and better service than one is expected to render and doing it in a positive mental attitude. Putting in the extra work is something that has always helped successful people reach their goals. Entrepreneurs like Jeff Bezos, Dan Pena, and Elon Musk are just a few that are known to talk about the importance of putting in the extra hours to make goals reality. By putting in the extra work, you are guaranteeing yourself to be on the fast track to success. With this introduction, the magic key to success will be within your easy reach. I say this is your greatest asset uh, because it is the fourth of the 17 success principles with which you may tap and draw upon the supreme power which created you and runs this entire universe. 
The name of this principle is applied faith. And I want you to remember it is not something I am bringing to you, but it is something you already possess, although you may not have made use of it in the past. And now let me tell you what applied faith is and uh, what you can do with it. Applied faith is the mental attitude wherein you may clear your mind of all fears and doubts and direct it to the attainment of whatever you desire in life. Having faith in your ideas and the dreams you are chasing are essential. If you allow your mind to worry about the failures, the setbacks, or what you do not have, you are allowing your subconscious to only associate failure with your goals. Remember, Elon Musk almost went bankrupt for Tesla. Michael Jordan got cut from his high school basketball team, and George Lucas' Star Wars was rejected by three major studios before getting picked up. Just keep going and fighting to make your dream come true. Your personality determines whether people are attracted to you or shy away from you. It is the show window in which you display your character to the world, and it is the one thing which distinguishes you from all other human beings. It is your trademark by which people recognize you. And it is the thing which determines your success or failure in selling yourself to life. Therefore, you should see your personality just as others see it, so you may improve it uh, where it needs improvement. Your personality has more of an effect on your success than you may realize. Certain traits in your personality help attract people to your cause and can be a make or break for you becoming successful. Mental attitude, how you treat people, and how you lead others are just a few examples of ways that a pleasing personality can help you in business and in life in general. Elon Musk often advocates for the importance of finding team members that work together and want the team to succeed versus wanting to succeed by themselves. What really matters is for, for, for someone's contribution to a company is how they are as an individual and how they affect others around them. I mean, you could say it's also analogous to a sports team. You know, if, if someone, um, the, the best person on the team is not necessarily the one who scores the most goals. It, it could be the person who assists in the most goals. Um, and, and, and if somebody is, if, if there's one person on the team who's just, just wants the ball all the time, just wants to kick it at the goal, um, that can actually be detrimental. Um, and um, so it, it's, it is important uh, to, to, to weigh uh, personality and just, uh, you know, are, are they going to be a good person, or people like working with them, that kind of thing, it's, it does make a difference. Self-discipline, as I am presenting it to you here, has reference not only to your mastery of negative habits, which stand in the way of your success, but more particularly to your development and enforcement of the positive habits you will need in order to avail yourself of the six assets. If you cannot push yourself towards your goal and instead fall prey to procrastination, then your goal will never be accomplished. Dr. Gordon Peterson constantly advocates how important self-discipline is to be successful. One of his most famous quotes is, Can you imagine yourself in 10 years if, instead of avoiding the things you know you should do, you actually did them every single day? That's powerful. By being able to master the skill of self-discipline, you will not only be able to reach your goals, but also live a more fulfilling and expert life. A positive mental attitude can clear away all obstacles which stand between you and your major purpose in life. Because of the importance of the subject of our visit, I shall not only tell you that a positive mental attitude is the entire list of the 12 great riches in life, but I am going to give you explicit instructions. Keeping a positive attitude is essential. If you find yourself in a constant negative state, it is hard to see past your struggles. Denzel Washington has been quoted in saying, Positively and negatively, you attract what you feel, you attract who you are, you attract what you attract. If you keep a positive mindset and look for solutions instead of problems, this will help you grow in your business and in your personal life as well. Someone has said that knowledge is power. That is only a half truth. For knowledge becomes power only when it is put into action for the attainment of a definite objective. Enthusiasm is one of the more powerful means by which we may put into action our education, experience, and knowledge. Spoken words without enthusiasm are often ineffective, and sometimes they can be actually forced. I believe you'll be interested in knowing that your brain and every other person's brain is both a broadcasting station and a receiving station which sends out thought vibrations and picks up 
those sent out by other people. When you turn on your enthusiasm, you step up the vibrations of thoughts which go out from your brain so that they reach and affect other people more quickly. As a matter of fact, you can send out thoughts which have been so stepped up with silent enthusiasm that they will reach and influence other people to whom you direct your thoughts. This is a fact which has been known to psychologists for ages, and it is also known to most master salesmen who use this method to condition the minds of their prospective buyers before they ever talk with them. You must have observed that the enthusiasm is very contagious, that it engages the attention of those who come under its influence and it causes them to respond in a similar spirit of enthusiasm. If you aren't enthusiastic about your goals, you may want to readjust. By being enthusiastic and excited about your goals, it makes it easier for you to be able to put the work in to reach them. Steve Jobs was often described as someone who was enthusiastic about his life, and when asked about what made Apple so successful, he was quoted in saying, We are just enthusiastic about what we do. If you aim for success above mediocrity, you will need to learn to act on your own personal initiative because your success is something which you must achieve for yourself without someone telling you what to do or how to do it. By taking initiative, you are taking control of your reality. No one is going to give you the life you seek to you. It is up to you to make it happen, and that is why taking initiative is such a big factor in creating a successful life. As the trillion dollar man, Dan Pena, puts it, Taking action, action, action is the only thing that gets anything done. Every disappointment, every defeat, and every failure you meet with from now on the remainder of your life. Yes, the principle of learning from adversity makes it possible for you to transmute all your past failures and mistakes into an asset which will help you achieve outstanding success in the future. Failure is inevitable. Oprah Winfrey was fired from her job as a television news anchor. Albert Einstein was told he was mentally slow. And Henry Ford's first two automobile companies failed. Did they quit? No, they learned from their failures and took the adversity head on because they knew how important the dream they were chasing was. I do not know of a better definition of imagination than this. There are two forms of imagination. First, there is synthetic imagination, which consists of organizing and putting together of recognized ideas, concepts, and facts arranged in a new combination. Very seldom does anyone create an idea or anything else absolutely new. Nearly everything known to civilization is but a combination of something that is old. Secondly, there is creative imagination which operates through the sixth sense and has its base in the subconscious section of the brain and serves as the exclusive medium through which basically new ideas or facts are revealed. Imagination is one of the most powerful tools in our toolbox for success. If it were not for creative imagination, we would not have electricity, running water, the wheel, and every technology that helped humanity to move forward in evolution. Never hide your creative ideas from the world because you might very well be the next Thomas Edison. In this visit, I shall give you a working description of the rules of accurate thinking, which all successful people follow. First of all, accurate thinking is based on two simple fundamentals. They are called inductive reasoning and deductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning is used when the necessary facts on which to base your thinking are not available. In this case, you act on hypotheses or what you assume the facts to be. Deductive reasoning is used when you have the facts or what appear to be the facts on which to base your thinking. The next step in accurate thinking is to separate facts from fiction or hearsay evidence and uh, determine whether you are dealing with hypotheses or real facts. When you are sure you have dependable facts on which to base your thinking, you take the second step by separating these facts into two classes. One is the important facts and the other is unimportant facts. When you do this, you may be surprised at the overwhelmingly greater number of unimportant facts you deal with daily than there are important facts. At this point, you are almost sure to want to ask the question, what is an important fact? And how can I distinguish it from an unimportant fact? And I shall give you the answer to this very important question by saying that an important fact is any fact which will aid you to any extent whatsoever in attaining the object of your major purpose in life.
and all other facts, as far as you are concerned, are unimportant, and you should waste no time with them. By being able to decipher what is important and unimportant in your grand vision in life, it will help you think more accurately on what will help you reach your goals in life or what will hinder them. By being able to think accurately, you can make better choices that will allow you to reach your goals. Cosmic habit force binds every living thing lower in the scale of intelligence than man with what we call instinct. But man can rise above these fixed patterns by which lower forms of life live and establish his own pattern. Uh, this privilege is the only thing over which man has complete power of control and direction. And it is interesting to observe that the Creator never gives man any form of riches without sending along with it the means by which man may do whatever he pleases with those riches. Like every other natural law, cosmic habit force has both a positive and a negative potential application. The negative application of this law is called hypnotic rhythm, which means, among other possible results, it fastens upon individuals that by our neglect to fix our thoughts upon the things we desire in life, and thereby gain the power of cosmic habit force in attaining these desires, the law automatically acts through the negative hypnotic rhythm feature and fixes our mind on the things we do not desire and attracts to us the physical counterpart of these desires. Understand this principle of the law of cosmic habit force and obviously you will have a better conception as to how essential it is to keep your mind occupied with the life pattern and the things and circumstances you desire until this pattern is taken over and made permanent by cosmic habit force. The universe is an incredible thing. If we can understand that the power of creating the lives we wanted, the businesses we'd like to open, the person we'd want to fall in love with, our potential is limitless. By being able to understand that one of the biggest secrets to making your dream life come true is simply by imagining it, then you are well on your way to creating and being in the life you completely desire. Napoleon Hill was able to provide step-by-step -step instructions to reaching your goals and creating the life you've always wanted. We can see these principles working in real life and how other successful people use them in their day-to-day -day lives to help them reach their goals. What was your favorite principle of Napoleon Hills? Let us know down below in the comments section and make sure to hit like and subscribe to keep up to date for our new videos.